Ingredients. Carrot. Gotta respect that. Uh, Damn, Gina! What is that? Oh, it's the sloppy Jessica. Mac and cheese, chili pizza on a bun. It's everything I've wanted to eat for the last 48 hours. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babbage. For this week, we're taking a look at the single carrot from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. First, we're going to take a single baby carrot, give it a good looking at, appreciate it, all of its curves and complexities. Let's see how it tastes. Oh, wow, it tastes exactly like a carrot. Screw this. Let's make the Sloppy Jessica. The Sloppy Jessica is Gina's abomination that combines chili, macaroni and cheese, and pizza on a bun. So we've made chili a few times on the show before, so we're going to make a relatively basic chili. We're starting with the usual routine of soaking some dried ancho chilies in boiling water for 10 minutes before adding a few teaspoons each of cumin, ground coriander seed, paprika, one or two canned chipotles in adobo sauce, depending on your level of heat tolerance, and blend the whole thing together to make chili paste. Then we're going to brown some ground round. I'm kidding, this is probably Chuck. It's more fun to say though. Then in the fat from the beef, we're going to saute some onions, add some garlic, add some tomatoes, add the chili paste, and there you go. Very basic, but very delicious chili which of course we're going to season after simmering for at least 45 minutes. Next up, we need to make some red sauce for the pizza element of the Sloppy Jessica. Again, we've made red sauce in many different iterations on this show before. The basic idea is finally mince a small onion, saute for a few minutes until soft, crush in a clove or two of garlic and saute for an additional 30 seconds or until fragrant, and then add your tomatoes. I'm going with a 50-50 mix of diced and pureed tomatoes. Also, I'm gonna throw in a little bit of dried oregano and a whole sprig of basil. Simmer for 45 minutes to an hour until slightly thickened and the acidity of the tomatoes has abated. Next up, mac and cheese. Now, a close examination of the sandwich indicates that it's not actually macaroni elbows like usual, but ziti. I mean, it's not like they were exercising restraint when they designed this sandwich. Once the pasta is cooked, drain and set aside so we can make a roux for our cheese sauce. Equal parts, in this case, three tablespoons each of butter and flour, toasted together for about 30 seconds until the sort of raw flour smell goes away, and then slowly streaming in maybe three cups of whole milk, whisking the whole time until a thick sauce forms. Make sure you scrape the corners so you don't miss any of that roux hiding out. Whisk until thoroughly combined and starting to thicken. Add a little bit of dried mustard, a few dashes of hot sauce if you're feeling frisky. Keep whisking as the mixture heats up, and then it's time to add the cheese. I'm going with a solid pound of grated yellow cheddar along with maybe four or five ounces of grated Parmesan. Adjust as necessary for optimal cheesiness before adding the pasta to the mixture and mixing until evenly coated, trying very, very hard not to eat the whole thing in one sitting. Of course, season with salt and pepper before serving or stuffing into a sandwich. Pizza is listed as a component to this sandwich, so I'm thinking we make French bread pizza as our sandwich scaffolding. And the way I like to make my French bread pizza is starting with a layer of mozzarella, then hitting it with the sauce, thus preventing sauce bread saturation. And because I apparently don't give a shit about my health anymore, another layer of mozzarella and some freshly grated Parmesan placed into a 425 degree Fahrenheit oven. Well, that guy's going, we need to make chili mac. What is chili mac? Well, I'll tell ya, it's chili with macaroni and cheese. Just in case you thought it was like cold macaroni and cheese or something. Anyway, our French bread pizza's out the oven, so naturally it's time to top it with a whole bowl of chili macaroni and cheese. And now we gotta try to close this thing up. On our first attempt, we're gonna burn our precious little fingers, ow, but then we're gonna take a deep breath, grow a pair, and turn this into something resembling a sandwich. We're gonna cut it in half because it'd be physically impossible to eat it in its current state. And then as we promise ourselves we're going to research salads for future episodes of Binging with Babish, we dig in like the monsters we know we are. And as you can imagine, this guy joined the Clean Plate Club. It was damn near impossible to eat this entire thing, but you know what? I'm really glad I did it, and I'm just kidding. Of course, I cut it up and shared it with my friends. Serving this sandwich which is one of the few ways you can be both a really good and a really bad friend at the same time.